still sitting here connected <laughs> connected over and over again okay so the main thing I wanted to make sure of was that this was not going to echo something that it shouldn't which twitch is the folks working on uh, on the, the other end of this are smart enough not to echo back things like things that they shouldn't so that's good um, so we need the actual token and then what I can set an environment variable in the terminal maybe so if I do let's see what what environment variable are we reading out of twitch token or I could have it read a file that was what I was originally well, read out of a file I could have I could do a lot of different things let's let's uh, let's see um, export thing equals that if I clear okay I can't scroll anymore good <laughs> all right give me a second I'm gonna move this over here. And I'm gonna move this over here. And, uh, and just have that up for a minute. Okay, so let me go get a token. Yeah, implicit grant flow. that paste that there okay and then let me get my client ID okay so that I should be able to do and then then it wants to ask so this is so when you follow that URL if you've not seen that before I can share this The client ID is insensitive because it's just, it's basically pointing out what is the application that I'm authenticating to. Um, the the Seagra part comes after I click authorize because it's gonna give me back an auth code uh, or token in this case. So this send live stream chat and room messages, view stream chat and room messages. So I just click authorize, that redirects me back to localhost and gives me an access token because we're using that implicit grant flow. So I copy that. And then I over on the terminal, I set that environment variable twitch token to be that value. And then I clear terminal so that I can't scroll back up and see that anymore. All right, so now, <laughs> so, so now uh, if I run Oh, I gotta be careful of history too. Uh, if I run um, IEX-S mix, hix, I wanna be careful in that terminal not to up arrow <laughs> and undo all my hard work. Uh, okay, so now uh, we have the environment variable that has the token. We have the token in our state as well. Um, what we could do is maybe let's make a um, another method that handles the setup of like sending Nick and pass and those things. So we'll do uh, spec join channel. Override the logger to sophisticate the token. So th that was what I was testing before, was making sure that, um, yeah, I could do that, but at least right now, nothing is logging the token.
Also, how would I... Identify the token specifically to uh, to mask it. Um, I think join channel just takes the PID, right? Because we don't need to send anything else. Everything else, the length, yeah, maybe. Uh, how would we override the logger? Uh, hey, look, <laughs> this this might even be right. Joining channel, client, cap rec, yeah, all those things, pass. Yeah, I didn't include OAuth in the token, so that should be good. Uh, I don't think there's actually a, a pound sign when you do join. Okay, so I think... Uh, it doesn't like that for some reason. Pattern can never match the type. Pattern can never match the type. State, send message, client message. What does it mean? The way I know of involves creating a macro with the using function and overriding a particular method. Interesting. Why specifically string? This is a string now. <laughs> and this is a string, isn't it? The pattern can never match the type. Pattern this. Oh, um, it's it's talking about client uh oh wait, 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 why Confused. How do we get state? Right, so this, this is being called like here and we're calling send message here, which sends frame. If we have state internal to our process, how do we use that? Obviously not like this. Like state isn't available here. Yeah, but I don't have that state. That state is inside of, that, that state is, is created <laughs> <laughs> and it's inside of uh, all of this. Like, these functions have the state. Like, I'm pretty sure behind the scenes this is like a gin server or something. Like, if we look at WebSock X. The OTP special process. Yeah, each method call internal to the process. So like in the server. But this is a client method. So what I need to do is sends a frame through the WebSocket. If the connection is either connecting or closing, this will return an error. If the connection failure is discovered while sending, return. Yep. Um, okay. Let me let me take a look at the docs and or the example. Like when we call echo, we're just calling send frame, text message. Okay, let's let's look at another example. Auth headers, no, that's not really interesting. So this is using start instead of start link. No. Okay.
I still don't know what handle cast does. Yeah, it responds to calls to cast, yes. Send frame, send to frame through the WebSocket. Start, start, and it handle terminate. Okay, and callbacks. So this is, th these are the things that are getting the state. So th th those are the things that I'm implementing in here, right? Like handle disconnect, handle frame, handle connect. These are callbacks that are being called. Handle info, invoke to handle all other non-WebSocket messages. Invoke to handle asynchronous cast two messages, handle cast. So I wonder if what we need to do here is we need to take this step out, cast, to client and then do a handle info or handle cast rather that then calls web uh websock x that send frame for these things for this to actually work and to be able to have access to the state because callback handle cast does have the state Let's imagine that we're going to do that. <laughs> Def handle cast. Um, the message is going to be something like join. Then we're going to do something like logger info joining channel. Very clever, but no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I don't know if that's the right thing. No reply. We're going to find out. But I, I'm pretty sure that we need to do something like this. Oh, that was. That was what I'm looking for, yes. Um, wait, how does... Itself though, isn't it? I wanna send it to ourselves. This is the part that I think I've tried before and this doesn't work. We're gonna find out. So now, I'm going to do um, cast. Doesn't like that. Okay. Is it websockx.cast? doesn't hate that. Okay, this isn't happy because we're supposed to return okay or close or okay. So no reply is not a real thing. Okay, so that <laughs> that might work. And then we, we can call twitchbot.websocket dot uh, Join channel. If I recompile, okay. And then... All right, I don't have the history. Uh, right, so I got to do it all again. Uh, Twitch bot. This is the, the best example of why I should rename the module is the amount of typing. 
dot start blank thing. Okay, and then I'm gonna do twitchbot dot websocket dot join channel ped calling self error. Yeah, seen this before. Shell process exited with reason. Websock ex dot calling self error function sin frame. I think it's really easy to um, <laughs> think of this like a class with methods, but that that's not what's going on here. Um, and what I've seen, I have seen examples where, uh, what have I seen done? So I guess I could do something like um, pid equals self. And then what we do is we do like uh, spawn. like that and do all of these things. And it's very, it's very clever copilot, but now what I want, stop it. Uh, and of course self here needs to be PID. That's why I called it PID. And now look now, now the process isn't calling itself. So that should work, right? I don't know. Because I don't know this language, this runtime, this environment. Ooh. You are an amazing twisty passages all alike. <laughs> Welcome. Good luck. Have fun. All right. Now... Uh, let me take a look at this response I got back and make sure there's nothing in here that is going to make me sad that I've just shared on stream. I don't think so. Some uh, IDs and GUIDs to do with emotes, looks like. All right. Cool. So, the next step... is that I would like that after we connect, we automatically join the channel. Now, for instance, I cannot inside of handle connect, just cast to, jo to join. <laughs> Um, nor could I, I mean, I could, I could just give up on this whole, like, what I could do is I could take this code. I think I could just take this code right here and put it inside of connect. Well, this code. And then throw the rest of this away for now. like that and then we don't need this uh, missing a there we go so now Is there, I mean, so that recompiles the code, but does that affect, I guess, yep. 
as soon as the supervisor see like as soon as the previous connection dies and that that process dies the supervisor starts a new one and it uses the recompiled code recompiled code so now we're connected we've joined the channel we've we successfully authenticated we're in so now uh i should be able to well if i knew what the pid was of this process and knew how to like <laughs> get a hold of it i could send a message to that pid and that would appear in twitch chat uh for that matter if i were just to go over where's my stream manager there we go Did someone want to say something in chat I think we might actually see something here, um, if such a thing were to happen. Well, that is something. Uh, maybe not. Okay. Why? Like, hmm. We're not disconnected yet. We... We, we are logging when we receive messages. Yeah, no worries. Why, um... Why no message? Badge info badges. So this is all my info. Did we not successfully join the channel? Yeah, I thought we did with join. Let me check the docs. Uh, yeah, we can we can bring this back down now. Okay, access token, pass Nick reply. Okay, so all this stuff is the reply to doing pass and Nick. And then next steps, join the chat room. Joining a chat room. Oh, there there is supposed to be a pound sign. Yeah, it's sending a message and join. Yes, we can do that too. But yes, yes, there should be a pound sign here. Um, and let's also. Join channel. Um, Priv message channel help. Huh? What does that do? Hold on. How do we? How do we? How do we do things? <laughs> what is? Uh, example chatbot. Example code. Nick pass. Priv message. Set a timer to post feature move messages. Timer can be. That seems correct. Yeah, maybe, maybe so. Let's uh, let's let's save it and recompile. Um, ooh, we received a ping. Did we send back a pong? <laughs> um, okay. So what I would like to do though, is I would like to make this so that we register the name. Uh, let's see, hold on. I have, I have all, well, a couple of different things. Naming processes was the thing that I saw. So if you call start link, you can't, I mean, you get the PID this way and you can do that. But if you call process.register with the PID, you can do that, but there is a shortcut where, yeah, OTP makes it easier. Name, name. So you could do that, or you could do ops, start link, project worker. Yeah, we could do, we could do all sorts of things, but what I, what, all I wanna do right now is I want to say add module name to the ops to name the process. This looks familiar from an example I saw before. So we're adding um, 
name being module to ops. Unless the key already exists. Okay, that's what put new does. Good. So then, if we've done that, That, that means we don't have to call process.register. What does that actually get us though? Then you can use the module name in place of the PID in various places. This, uh, this article says, various places. Okay, so I'm gonna Stop the process and start it again. Ta da! From the bot. Okay, receive message, join, save and equal saving. <laughs> okay. Room state, very interesting. We have a bot. And I'm pretty sure anything that happens in chat, we should see. All right, we've received a message. Uh, okay, so we basically got a a list of the people that are in the chat or other bots as the case may be uh, one thing we'll need to do is probably like classify the different messages coming back to like do different things with them pattern match on them so if I go over here and say, oh, there we go, we got a message. <laughs> From the one, the only, Brainless Society. Foxy V5 Eek. Yes, yes indeed. <laughs> mm. Okay. Well, great success. Okay, well, um, was there something else I was trying to figure out? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to figure out how to get a hold of the process so I could interact with it from the, the terminal. Um, so let's do this one more time. Oh, right, I get distracted because suddenly it was working. There we go. All right. So can I can I do uh, twitchbot dot websocket dot send message and then say twitchbot dot websocket uh, there we go instead of the pid and they'd be like hi. Unknown command. All oh, right, right, right. It has to be actual command. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do, uh, now that we've registered this this module as the name, um, it would be good to have a way, like uh, a thing that we could interact with this WebSocket to be able to send messages to the channel. Uh, yeah, so spec. Let me let me do it this way. Uh, let's just do def. Uh, nope, none of that. Uh, send message to channel. Yep, like that. And I guess yeah, this works. Client channel message. Um, 
<laughs> yeah. Let the hacking attempt start. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm just checking. <laughs> What do I want to do here? Uh, I guess in a way. Okay, let's let's just can we fold some things here? Um, I mean to some extent. Hmm. What what is that? What is the emote? Oh, it's really interesting. Why do the emotes look different? Like, um, I mean, besides... <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you go. Okay, okay. That's interesting. So the, because I have Twitch, uh, Twitch chat open. Yeah, emojis very, well, not just that. Like I have, um, I have Twitch in OBS. And then I have Twitch, uh, uh, the chat. I mean, I have the the chat in OBS, and then I also have the chat in the uh, in the Twitch, the stream manager, the Twitch provides, and then we have the chat here too. And so the emotes in the chat in the stream manager look like what you're seeing on stream here, but they look different in the um, the chat uh, plugin doc for OBS. I wonder why. So not just OS. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we have this message. I guess probably what we want to do, yeah, there's a ping. What do we want to do? What information do we want to parse out of? Also, it also varies by browser. Yeah, there's probably a different, um, like browser engine backing, uh, the chat doc for OBS. So we have all this info. We have like badge info, badges, Client nonce, color, display name, emotes. Is it their first message? Are there flags? There's an ID. Are they a mod? Returning chatter. Room ID. Subscriber. Turbo. <laughs> user type. And then we have this. And we have priv message. And then the channel and then a space and a colon okay so there's a whole format to this <laughs> yeah that that is th those are some characters such interesting characters you have brainless Trying to find non UTF 8. Hmm. Well, this is fun. Now that I'm, I'm like sitting on this WebSocket, I can see every time someone <laughs> joins uh, the chat immediately. All right. I think. So, so ultimately, like the, what was the point <laughs> of doing this? Um, I thought it would be interesting to do like some analysis on the Twitch messages. Um, we were talking last stream about maybe connecting this up to Redis and like putting messages from the Twitch chat into Redis 
maybe with a TTL or whatever. Um, and I think I still want to do that. But how do we get from here to there? Like, I don't necessarily want to take the raw text from, uh, you know, that we're getting here. I think we probably want to parse this first. I don't know if we want all of this information. Let's uh, let's go back to the docs. Um, here we go. Send and receive messages. Did you hear? Yeah. I, <laughs> did you hear that Reddit went into a non-open source license? I think they will still be open source, but clearly won't be the same. Well, um, I did see uh, kind of a reaction video that included uh, a bit of like reading through their their press release. And uh, the takeaway from that was that it's not going to be in future versions open source. It's going to be a license that will allow you to have access to the source code, but not open source. Um, so future seems unclear for Redis as a thing under that brand. I imagine there will be many forks. All right, so this tells us exactly what we've seen. The interesting part is that large contributors are claiming they want their contributions removed from the source. Uh huh. Interesting. I mean, yes, but. They can ask for that. I don't think anyone is really obligated to unless they, the license that they, assuming they didn't just, you know, sign a, uh, uh, one of those contributor <laughs> agreements, turning over copyright, um, assuming they still hold copyright, whatever license they put that code under when they contributed it to, uh, to Redis, probably doesn't give them the ability to unlicense it or I mean I don't know I'm not familiar with the details I'm just guessing uh, that their options may be somewhat limited um, that is one reason why when I put open source things out nowadays um, unless I have a very specific reason I will use the uh, the AGPL license because at least then uh, it's not just GPL. So like anyone distributing it with changes has to contribute, you know, make the source code for their changes available. But if they're baking, you know, baking it into a service, they also have to, even if they're not quote unquote distributing uh, the source code. Now, that does mean that there are probably um, situations where people will not be in a situation where they can use the things that I'm making. And that is the situation that it is. we can reply to a message. I don't intend to. <laughs> I don't want to make any PR to your repo now you might I Well, see, that's the thing is that I could change the license for my code. Um, but if you contribute code, if it's, you know, it gets interesting. Like if you add a new file, that is, you know, code that you wrote, you have the copyright to, like, automatically. Um, you could contribute it, and I think it is kind of implied if you have a repository that's under a certain license by contributing that code, you're contributing it with the same license. Um, something I used to see on projects, and like the the big projects are probably also the case. Oh. 
Hello from the bot. Did we get did we get kicked and restarted? And why? Uh, let's see. Receive message. Join channel. Okay. Uh, it looks like we got disconnected. For some reason. Uh, yeah, there's supposed to be a thing where um, Twitch sends a ping. We may be not sending a pong. Yeah. Exactly. Let's deal with that first. Um, there is, I think, a thing. Yeah. Uh, let's let's get rid of this for now. And then I think we can just do like a reply. I wonder if that will work. All right. Uh, well, we'll see because we should see a, a message being logged, received ping. Whereas before we were getting, um, ba, 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 received message ping. So we'll see. We'll see if that happens. Let's uh, let's do this side by side so I can uh, keep an eye on the on the bot. Okay, so to reply to the above chat mas message, and again, I don't know if that's what I wanna actually do, I just wanna get more context about how this works. Uh, your bot sends the following priv message message. Fubar, indeed. <laughs> uh, it includes the reply parent I message ID tag, which identifies the chat message you're replying to. Uh, and so CD04, 5F. Okay, that's the ID from the message. So it looks like I remember I remember my bot. I wonder if I still have the repo. Uh, maybe. Receiving chat messages. When a user enters a message in the channel's chat room, the Twitch IRC server sends your bot a priv message message. In the above message, the first part of the message identifies who wrote the message in the chat room. In this case, Foo wrote the message. Who? Foo. Second part of the message identifies the type of message, command, and the name of the channel, bar, Third part of the message is the chat message that the user posted in the chat room. Okay, the bot won't receive its own proof message messages back. Display name tag contains the bot's name. Message does not include the chat message that the bot sent. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure we did request um, a bunch of different things and handle connect, uh, cap request, tags, commands, and membership. Tags, commands, yep. All right, so what is the, uh, what is what is the actual like structure? I mean, we can kind of infer. I mean, I see it's separated by semicolons. It looks like there aren't any spaces in this first part. So it's like key value with equal signs separated by semicolons, and then a space, and then this bit, and then a space and a thing and a space. Um, Hmm. 
Ooh, what's going to be a good way of parsing that? Ah, example message parser. Oh. All right, and that's what it looks like when someone leaves the chat. <laughs> Message parser, parse message, tag source command parameters, expects the caller to pass a single message. Okay, so we received message ping, but we didn't receive a ping. So what I changed here was not sufficient. Um, Interesting. I wonder if we could do something where we def handle frame text and then um, can we match? Can we do like string matching looking for this? I mean, I guess the message is just this, right? Uh, this doesn't work though. We cannot send frame <laughs> to self like this. Uh, we should be able to reply though. I understand how this is supposed to work. Okay. Uh, Recompile. Is there a way for us? Um, I mean, I guess the easiest thing to do is just to stop the server and restart it. There we go. Okay, so how is this, how does this work? Wow, I'd forgotten all of my GitLab repos. Do you, you have a lot? Do I have GitLab repos? I might have Bitbucket repos, lots of finance related ones. Interesting. What is this index representing here? How are we incrementing the index? This is an interesting parser. I wonder if we could just use a regex. Uh, I think I mentioned that I used to work in finance before moving to software. I, I vaguely recall <laughs> I think I recall you saying something about that. Might have been a while ago. Okay, parse command. So it seems like there's command and channel. Uh, I don't suppose there's just like an elixir. Um, Hold on. Uh, what is the what is the site called? Um, I even even have an Angular JS app I did for work. Uh, is it hex? I guess it's hex. Um, anything about Twitch? Hey, look, there's TMI. Mm, excuse me. Could it be that there's a thing that does all the work that I've been doing? <laughs> uh, uh. Yeah, but what's the fun of that? Yeah, it's fair. 
I mean, we've made so much progress. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Can we... Do you have a link to the source code? takes me to this cool all right how, how is theirs implemented oh hey here's the thing def macro using quote to use gen server require logging start link gen server start link uh huh, uh huh. Join kick me, part say, whisper, list channels, connected, logged in, chin server callbacks. Uh, oh yeah, we also need to keep an eye for those, uh, for the ping. See if this is actually working. Uh, bot callbacks. Handle action. Basically that def macro using is for writing, uh, use my module somewhere and injecting all that code. I see. Okay, so I can say, uh, use TMI. <laughs> and then it injects all of this. So like when, in my code where I'm using uh, use WebSockX or whatever, there is something like this. It's injecting a bunch of stuff. Uh, oh, there we go. There's. Okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, in the code I wrote, I initialized some module attributes and defined some macros, which are also injected. Okay, so we receive message ping. TMI.switch.tv. Um, should we not have. logged received ping instead of like shouldn't this have been run or is this is there something wrong about this construction Might be needed as a binary. Yeah. I have seen something like that at one place. Um, I was doing something in Copilot suggested something like that. But um, try it out. Try it out. Hmm. Connection server. Start link, module name, gen server, handle continue. I'm just kind of curious if I can glean something from this. Connect, hey, request capabilities, all that stuff. Message server. Very, very fancy. Um, hmm. So here's a question. Does, does this... Uh, I want to go here, right? Ping? Is that a thing that's talked about in here? Not at all. There's a PR, or no, there's an issue. <laughs> Received ping from server. Sent a ping request pong. Okay. So it says that happens, 
but there are no results for searching for that in the code. Maybe there's a PR, a version with a big rewrite. All right, Twitch wants me to uh, go get some water. <laughs> well, they want to run an ad, so I'll be back in just a minute. Uh, and we'll, I don't know, do something, figure it out, BRB.